everyone. Welcome to your 4-4 portal, April 4th. Uh, something that I noticed, I'm not a numerologist by any stretch, but something that I did, uh, I know enough to be dangerous, we'll say that. Something I did notice was that four for April, the fourth day, four and four is eight, and then 20, 24, two, two, and four is eight. Interesting. There might be something at the uh, the Lions Gate, the eight eight portal coming into play um, on August eighth. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, but I wanted to do a reading to see what kind of energy we could harness during this powerful portal. Uh, a little bit again. I'm not a numerologist, but a little bit about the number four. It represents stability, order, determination. Um, people with leadership skills for the number four and four is um, also associated with money and wealth. So we'll explore things um, as they might come up in the reading. Um, so let's just kind of take a look here. I pulled some tarot cards from some of my decks and four is the emperor in the major arcana in the tarot. So the emperor is all of the kings combined. He's the king of cups, the king of wands, the king of swords, and the king of pentacles. So very grounded, stable energy. And the reason I chose this one from the Everyday Witch Tarot is that he's surrounded by all these rocks, <laughs> which is stability. Um, I don't know if you can hear my cat, Phineas. He is meowing. So there must be something about that. Um, He's got his trusty puppy here, you know, loyalty, compatibility, also number four. Um, he's got, he's seated on his throne. He's got everything with him. He's even got his kitty in his lap too. So um, this to me represents a very grounded, stable energy. So that's why I chose this, the emperor uh, for number four. The four of swords this is my take a nap card. <laughs> so whenever this comes up, this is also from the Everyday Witch Tarot. Um, I think it purposely, or sorry, Mercury retrograde, right? Okay. I think it does well in illustrating the take a nap part of this card. It's like time out, just relax. Meditation brings answers, um, like chill. The four of wands is stability. It's also often the the twin flame card. Sorry, I went off camera with that. <laughs> so the four of wands here, you can see she's standing on a stool. She's balancing on one foot. Um, this is also a card about celebration. So like May Day. So maybe something about May Day is coming in uh, in about a month. So pay attention to that. Um, so it's about stability, building strong foundations. The Four of Cups, I call my Lamentations card <laughs> because it it can, everything has light and shadow. So this is a perfect illustration. This is from the Light Sears Tarot. And she, this is actually my favorite Four of Cups. She is showing us um, the perfect view of this card. So the shadow side is that it's it's stagnant energy, it's water that's not moving. But the light side is that it's a perfect time, again, just chill, um, reevaluate, take stock. What's going on? Why am I not happy? There's a journal prompt or meditation prompt for you. And then from the steampunk tarot, the four of pentacles. This is my favorite four of pentacles card um, out of all the decks that I have. This is about conserving resources. And yes, Pentacles does talk about coins. She's holding a coin up there. So um, money, but also your energy, your time, being judicious about where you spend it and with who and on who and what. So again, another meditation slash journal prompt for you. How can I be better about setting boundaries around my resources? How can I spend more wisely um, conserving when you need to? because you never know what might happen. So there's a really good representation, just a little tarot 101 for you guys, um, just to kind of see the cards and see the different energy that comes about when we're talking about um, what fours represent in the tarot. 
Also with this portal, there are four, aha, <laughs> I think the universe played a little, little joke with us there, a little wink. Um, there are four planets that are currently in the sign of Pisces. Now we are in Aries sun season. Um, Merc Mercury is retrograde in Aries. We're in Aries sun season. Venus and Mars are um, in Pisces. Neptune is in Pisces. And so is Saturn. So Venus, Mars, Saturn, Neptune are all aligned right now in the sign of Pisces. And Pisces is um, the 12th sign. It's the Aries is the first, Pisces is the last. They're the bookends, uh, the Alpha and Omega, if you will, of the Zodiac. So these four planets being aligned in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is very mystical, uh, dreamy kind of energy. Neptune rules Pisces. Um, dreams and inspiration, aspiration. Um, so it, it, Pisces is also emotional, both light and shadow, right? Everything has two sides, but um, we're looking at the broader spectrum. So with Pisces, kind of like the emperor, Pisces embodies all of the previous signs before it. Um, but kind of see how your dreams uh, how to align with your dreams, how they can come true, how they can benefit the collective. There's a lot of energy around that at this point in time. Um, so just pay attention, pay, maybe pay attention to your physical dreams. Um, just see what, what might be coming up for you as far as your actual nighttime dreams. Um, and I also just heard, don't quit your daydream. Is there a song? I think there's a song, Don't Quit Your Daydream. Um, maybe look that up. But what did you always dream of doing? Now is the time. I just saw 11.11 on the clock. Um, now is the time to embrace your daydream. What have you always dreamed of doing? What have you always wanted to do? So in that um, spirit, I have the Shaman's Dream Oracle here. I'm going to pull. I'm going to do a collective and then I'll pull cards for individual zodiac signs. So this is the Shaman's Dream by Colette Baron Reed and Alberto. Oh, Alberto V. <laughs> I'm so sorry I can't pronounce that name and I don't want to butcher it. So let's see what we can, what guidance we can receive about the 4 4 portal. Ooh, cards are jumpy. Let's shuffle a little bit. There are all kinds of full of energy. So if you feel a little bit buzzy as you're watching this, um, ground yourself. Four is, is a stability number. It's a great day to ground yourself. If you are so lucky as to live in an area where you can go outside and put your feet barefoot on the ground, um, whether it's in the sand or on the grass, wherever you are. Um, otherwise, if you're not, or if it's, if you're not in a position to do that, um, maybe a foot soak and some Epsom salts, or just see, imagine in your, see in your third eye, light streams coming down from your feet, from the soles of your feet into the earth and ground yourself that way. Woo. All right. Speaking of being jumpy, one moment, please. Number 52, straddling worlds, wandering between realms. That's a really beautiful card. Five and two is seven. Being comfortable in two states, wandering between realms, reinvention. So those are your key words with this card. When the straddling world card shows up, it's an invitation to get used to living with one foot in your old world and one foot in the new. And that is perfect energy. We are in between eclipses right now. We had the lunar eclipse on March 25th in the sign of Libra with the full moon. And we're coming into the new moon in Aries eclipse on March 8th. And it is a huge source of news, especially where I live in Northeast Ohio, because we're in the path of totality. I plan on hibernating as much as possible that day <laughs> because there are going to be 
they're predicting a ton of people in the area. All the hotels are booked up. It's wild. Um, so there is some massive energy in this eclipse. And even if you're not in the area, um, the North American trajectory for the eclipse, it's still going to affect you. So you can still, for sure, take the opportunity to use this energy. So you can't go back to the way things were. You have to look forward to how things are going. And another key phrase for this eclipse that I keep hearing from people is quantum leap, quantum leap, quantum leap. So when I post the, um, it, so today's the fourth, when I post on Saturday, I'll upload the video for the um, new moon eclipse and that energy, I'm going to use the quantum oracle. So because of that quantum leap energy. So this is an opportunity to take a quantum leap into an exciting new future. You can uh, do this quietly. You don't have to be out in front of others. You don't even have to. The best piece of advice I ever got was not everybody needs to know everything that goes on in your life. Not everyone is your cheerleader. Even if they're not actively trying to sabotage you, their thoughts alone and thoughts become things. Thoughts are energy. Um, if they don't agree with what you're doing, that can energetically uh, put blocks down and ain't nobody got time for that. So make sure that um, you're doing, you're getting really clear on what you want to do. Uh, you don't have to explain yourself or be understood by any, everybody. Not everyone's going to understand you. Um, you might even surprise yourself. <laughs> so um, just do something where you can be completely inspired and leave leave the old behind and you're coming into the new so new ideas um sustainable ways of being in the world that's um very number four energy and i think something interesting that just came to mind april being the fourth month and we're in april april is um split between two signs aries and taurus very different energies, but also very similar energies. Airy is the self-starter, the go-getter, uh, bold, creative energy, which is number four energy. And then Taurus, which is ruled by the bull, but it's not a bull in a china shop. It's more of the bull wearing a flower crown, hanging out in the meadow, chewing grass, laying down. So that's the take a nap energy <laughs> that I showed you earlier. Um, that like, just chill and conserving resources of... Um, I'm going to sit here and eat grass until I have to get up and move. And then when I do, I will. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> Familiar is here. I think he's really feeling the energy. He's been very clingy to me for the last day or so. Um, so there we go from the shaman's dream. What dreams are you bringing into the new world? Are you into your new reality? Ooh, new world. That's interesting. We'll go with it. What dreams are you bringing in for yourself? follow your dreams. Those four planets in dreamy Pisces. Beautiful. Lovely. Of course, this is always up to you what you want to do with the energy. It's, it's your life. I'm not going to tell you how to live it. This is just energy and guidance to help help you think. Kind of shine a flashlight. I'm not going to tell you which way to go, but here's a flashlight. My help. So now I'm using the Tarot de la Nuit, Tarot of the Night. I thought that was also appropriate since we're in the waning cycle of the moon. For those of you who might be new to the channel, hello, welcome. I like to shuffle on camera so nobody can accuse me of stacking the desk. Five of Cups. Oh, okay, I'm going to pull an extra card because she is a very special card. So in the tradition of tarot, 
Uh, there are 78 cards. It's always 78 cards, always broken down into two sections, the major arcana and the minor arcana, et cetera, et cetera. So with this particular deck, there's a 79th card. She's Angel of the Night, Angel de la Noe, and she is here to bless the reading. So we've got Phineas, my familiar, and we've got the Angel of the Night. So this is a really big moment. So crowning the reading, we've got the devil and she is, and I say she, because this appears feminine um, on the card. She is someone who is here to illuminate where unhealthy addictions and habits might be holding you back. Also the sign of Capricorn, sorry, Capricorn. I don't make the rules. I just play by them. The five of cups. This is the grief card to me. And our mermaid friend here sees the ship sailing. And I'm not sure, <clears throat> it's hard to tell in the picture if the ship is sailing away and she's sad to see her friends leave, or if the ship is sailing towards her and she knows it's going to hit that big old rock and she's going to have to save somebody. And I just heard you can only save yourself. So much like, um, what I tell people when we go through grief counseling and grief work, I say that it's not time that heals all wounds. It's what you do with that time that can help you heal. So you're being invited here to figure out not only where do unhealthy habits and patterns and, and things that are holding you back come into play, but also it could be grief. And grief is more than just death. It's moving, job loss, loss of health, loss of independence. There's over 40 different types of life events that can um, trigger the sense of grief and loss. So um, things that are supposed to be happy, like graduation or retirement, becoming an empty nester, those sorts of things can also trigger grief. So sit with your grief, allow yourself to feel it, and then release it into the waters. With the two of pentacles in reverse, it's it, it the, usually when it's like this, it's decision time. When it's in reverse, it's like you don't have to make any choices right now that don't, okay, you never have to make any choices that don't feel in alignment with who you are and what you want to do with your life. But um, you also don't have to make a choice that doesn't feel right for you. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, but it, it's like, hold on, pump the brakes. We need to get through some of this stuff first because you don't want to make, oh, there it is. You don't want to make a choice based on fear. You, you don't do that. Don't ever do that. <laughs> don't make a choice based on fear. Get really clear about what you want to go, what you want to do and where you want to go in your life so that you can move forward in the best possible way and make good choices that are based in love and light. With justice in reverse, this is Libra. Justice being the scales, you know, all the things that justice can represent. So in reverse, you, it's like, it's not fair. Something's not balanced. You need that balance. You need that um, opportunity to make a choice from a good place, not somebody forcing your hand or saying, Come on, you got to make a choice. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's move. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. With the emperor here, there's there's an emperor, another one for you. <laughs> Number four, there he is. Um, definitely, and he's looking back at the angel here, uh, angel of night here, blessing the reading. So the emperor doing his thing here, he's also a, a protector with this shield protecting at all costs. That's what good father leader kind of energy does is protect. So protect yourself, protect. Again, I'm hearing the whole, don't tell everybody every move you're going to make. You can certainly ask a trusted friend, but it could end in um, unforeseen. Oh gosh. Disaster sounds really dramatic for that one, but it's coming through. So I got to say it. Um, so I'm going to pull some more cards from the Wizard's Tarot. So 
So um, it, it's a little bit of a, a warning. Gosh, that also sounds dramatic. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a mm, yellow flags here. The Ten of Pentacles. That is stability. This is um, the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles are both the happy family card um, with the, the Cups energy being emotions and the Pentacles energy being the financial and material stability. Like this is a really stable energy. So with the justice here in reverse, some of you might be going through a divorce or a breakup, um, or it could be that you're, you're cutting off people, maybe family members um, who don't have your best interests. Like not everybody can come with you. You can't speak butterfly language to caterpillars. They don't understand. So if people, okay, so that's apparently the main theme of the reading. If people don't understand your decisions or if you're, you think, oh gosh, I'm going completely against the grain here, against everything that my family's uh, ever taught me and stood for and tradition and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm going off the beaten path and they're not going to understand. That's okay. It's okay. They're probably just not meant to come with you and that's okay, which can cause grief. I understand, especially if you leave a faith system or a family or a job or something where people aren't going to understand why you did it. You don't have to explain yourself, but you know, losing some people, it's always scary to make change. Even if you know that where you have been the between two worlds where you have been for so long, humans are creatures, um, yeah, creatures of habit and, and we like comfort. And even if it's uncomfortable, at least we know what we're getting. We don't know what we're going to get if we take this leap of faith and come over here. But true change can only occur when you get so uncomfortable of being where you are that you're forced to bloom open. Beautiful. Ah, justice upright. Yes. So everything, um, that you're going to, so this is, this is where you have been recognizing the habits and the patterns and, and the things that haven't um, served you well with justice in reverse. It's, it's time to move forward. It's time to go in the direction of your dreams. It's time for stability. It's time for things to be equal and fair. On the bottom of the deck, the judgment card. Judgment. It's time to make a judgment card. Look at all this major arcana now. It's taught, yes, in the Ace of Swords underneath, Sword of Truth. What is your truth? Speak your truth. Live your truth. Live your authentic self, your authentic life. The star. Dreams, wishes. They come true. They really do. Walt Disney was right. <laughs> Wish upon a star. Your dreams can come true. And if people are like, oh, get your head out of the clouds, that's not... Uh, how things work. You have to work hard for money. You have to work hard for this. You have to do this. You have to live the, your life a certain way. You have to be married by a certain age and have kids in order to be happy and fulfilled. You have to get promotions. You have to climb the top of the corporate ladder. Those are all lies. <laughs> Those are lies. If it's something that you want, go get it. If climbing the top of the corporate ladder is what you want, then go do it. But I have a feeling you're here for a more spiritual enlightenment and reason. You know that there's more to life than just going to work, coming home, going to bed, getting up, going to work, coming home, going to until you die. There's so much more to life than that. What what are your dreams? What are your daydreams? Gorgeous, gorgeous energy. I'm going to pull another card from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. I know I'm not shuffling on camera. I'm sorry. I didn't want to screw up the cards that are there. Okay. Aries. Aries. Purity. Oh, yes. Cleansing. It's a beautiful energy. What, uh, what, need, what in your life needs purified right now? 
probably your thoughts. Cleanse your thoughts, those limiting belief systems. Woo. All right. Taurus. These are going to be fairly quick. I'm not going to go too in depth and pull out the, woo, he fell. Flew out, actually, of the deck. Ancestors. Wow. Okay. So tapping into your, there's the flower crown <laughs> that I said the bull wears. <laughs> and, oh, there's another one. Um, ancestors. So this could be breaking family patterns. It could also be those who can help you from the other side coming in. Gorgeous. Gemini. Dreams. Oh, oh, it's the cover. <laughs> dreams. Yeah, pay attention to your dreams. What I said earlier about Pisces and that dreamy energy and don't quit your daydream. Beautiful. Cancer. Nature. Oh, yep. That's about right. <laughs> so getting out in nature, grounding yourself, like I said earlier, um, or bringing nature inside, go buy yourself a bouquet of flowers, do something for grounding energy. Leo, I didn't even say it. And you're already popping out because of course you are kindred spirits. Oh, beautiful. So leaning on your soul tribe. Remember when I said, find, find somebody who supports you. And um, like, you don't have to tell everybody everything that's going on, but there might be a trusted advisor or someone that you can say, hey, how crazy is this? You want to come along on the journey <laughs> or someone who's already been there and can guide you and say, it's really not so scary. Just go into the cocoon. It'll be OK. With that butterfly there, butterfly language. Virgo. abundance. Woo. Look at you. And she does kind of Virgo, the Virgin. She does kind of look like a maiden there. There's butterflies and flowers and all kinds of stuff that represents abundance and prosperity. So with this four, four portal call in abundance, that is number four. Yeah. Beautiful. So, uh, what can, what can help get you to from scarcity mindset into an abundance mindset? Libra. transition. Oof. All right. Um, she's got wings. Hopefully that shows up on camera. She's got wings there. Transformation and transition. So interesting. So that between worlds, you're in a period of transition, you're going from one phase to the next. Yep, there's your confirmation Libra. Scorpio. Guardian angel. Oh, angel de la nuit. There she is. You've got your guardian angel with you. Um, connect, connect with your higher self and your intuition. You're a water sign. You can swim those depths. So um, get in contact with your guardian angel and see how you can best use this four four energy to help you. Woo. Right. Sag. Saggy. New beginnings. Okay, maybe a little spicy there. <laughs> just just a skosh. New beginnings. It's time for a brand new beginning. She's holding a baby up there if you can't see it. Oh. Okay, so new beginnings. Um, this is a beautiful opportunity for you to take that quantum leap, Sag. Woo. All right, Capricorn, you flew out. Grace. Oh, how beautiful. Grace. It's one of my favorite words. Give yourself lots of grace right now, Capricorn. Sorry about the devil energy. Like I said, I don't make the rules. I just play by them. So <laughs> um, give yourself lots of grace right now, Capricorn. Uh, just breathe. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I feel like you needed to, to hear that. Aquarius. Aquarius. Ooh. 
Oh, you also got Grace. Okay. So Grace is definitely coming through here. Um, even if you're not Capricorn or Aquarius, massive placement, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, etc. Just hear the message of grace. Give yourself lots of grace right now. It will do you well. And give others grace too. People can only uh, operate through their own filter of experience. Not everybody can open their minds, that's very Aquarian, to how other people operate. And Pisces. Pisces. Sanctuary. Oh, that's beautiful. Sanctuary. So finding a sanctuary. Um, you know, what is your safe place? But also being careful not to operate just from your comfort zone, stepping outside of that comfort zone. Um, Pis I'm a Pisces sun sign. So Pisces, we are very much able to swim those depths. We're mermaids after all. And we can um, go to levels that other people can't even fathom. So again, that butterfly language to caterpillars. So finding your safe space, where do you feel safe, grounded, protected? Maybe it's not just a place, it's a state of being, mentality. Beautiful, beautiful energy, you guys. Um, I'm going to pull one more from the Spellcasting Oracle about what kind of magic we're creating right now with this portal. And then I'll wrap it up. If you... Um, are so inclined, please feel free to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, leave a comment below if this resonates for you. And if you would like your own personal reading about uh, how to channel the energy of this portal or just in general, any questions you might have, the link to contact me is also below. Look at that. These cards are jumpy as well. It's just the energy. <laughs> Lots of energy. Oh, there we go. Okay. Pardon, please. Travel. Ooh. That's a beautiful card. I feel like I've seen this before. I think there's an artist that made this card whose name is escaping me at the moment. Beautiful. Anyway, so travel. <laughs> if anybody knows, comment below. <laughs> um, if I can find it, I'll, I'll link the page below as well. Anyway, travel. So uh, this is also Six of Swords energy. This is uh, often a depiction, somebody in a boat rowing away from something for the Six of Swords. Um, and that's moving on. So if it's not um, physical travel, it could be astral travel in your dreams. It could also be um, just that whole energy of moving on, moving forward with life. I'm not a huge fan of the saying move on because it, feel, we, it feels like a negative connotation of you need to move on already. And that's just my grief filter, <laughs> my grief work filter. Um, but moving forward and it, life is a journey. It's not a destination. So um, take it how it resonates. Could be physical travel, could be astral travel, could be the energetic of that moving from one world into the next and um and traveling that way that quantum leap really interesting really beautiful reading so thank you all for being here and for joining me i'm sending you all lots of love and light um take care of yourself during this portal and always <laughs> and ground yourself if you can um and uh this this portal's open so um we're, we're opening this portal. We're getting ready for this um, next eclipse. Very much in between worlds with those, those two eclipses, um, and with the 4-4 being right in, in between. So whoo, there's a lot of energy. So just ground yourself, brace yourself, um, take care of yourself, rest when you can, drink lots of water, do, do all the things, all the self-care things. 
and I will see you for the solar eclipse slash new moon in Aries reading. Take care.